Everyone already heard for cloning, but only few heard for the man who discovered the basis of that process. He and his assistant Hilda Mangold, made a huge steps with their discovery named embryonic induction. He was awarded a Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine in 1935. He is known as father of cloning. His name was, Hans Spiemann. Hans Spiemann. German embryologist, Nobel laureate and father of cloning. Early life. Hans Spiemann was born on June 27, 1869 at Stuttgart. He was the eldest son of the publisher, Wilhelm Spiemann and his wife Lysinka. From 1878 until 1888 he went to the Eberhard Ludwig School at Stuttgart and when he left school in 1888 he spent a year in his father's publishing business. From 1889 to 1890 he did his military service and then, after a period as a retail bookseller, he entered in 1891, the University of Heidelberg. There, until he took his preliminary examination in 1893, he studied medicine, and was especially attracted by the work of the comparative anatomist there, Karl Gijenbohr. In 1892 Spiemann married Clara Binder, with whom he had two sons. In 1893-1894 he moved to the University of Munich for clinical training. Scientific career He decided, rather than becoming a clinician, to move to the Zoological Institute at the University of Würzburg, where he remained as a lecturer until 1908. His degree in zoology, botany, and physics, awarded in 1895, followed study under Theodor Boveri, Julius Sachs, and Wilhelm Röntgen. For his PhD thesis Spiemann studied cell lineage in the parasitic worm Strongylus paradoxus, for his teaching diploma, the development of the middle ear in the frog. Spiemann advocated a holistic approach to biology. During the winter of 1896, while quarantined in a sanitarium recovering from tuberculosis, Spiemann read August Weissmann's book The Germ Plasm, A Theory of Heredity. He wrote in his autobiography, I found here a theory of heredity and development elaborated with uncommon perspicacity to its ultimate consequences, this stimulated experimental work of my own. As a master of microsurgical technique, Beginning with his continuing work on the amphibian eye, Spiemann's papers in the early years of the 20th century on this vexed question were to be a great contribution to the development of experimental morphogenesis, causing him to be hailed in some quarters as the true founder of microsurgery. He succeeded in dividing the cells with a noose of baby hair. Spiemann found that one half could indeed form a whole embryo, but observed that the plane of division was crucial. This dispatched the theory of preformation and gave some support to the concept of a morphogenetic field, a concept of which Spiemann learned from Paul Alfred Weiss. Spiemann remained in Würzburg until 1908, when he went to Rostock to assume a professorship of zoology and comparative anatomy, a position he held for the next six years. From 1914 to 1919, he was director of the Kaiser Wilhelm Institute for Biology in Berlin. In 1919, he was awarded the Chair of Zoology at the University of Freiburg, a post which he held until he retired and became Emeritus Professor in 1935. <music> Embryonic Induction and Organizers Spiemann's name will always be associated with his work on experimental embryology. He made himself a master of microsurgical technique and, working on the relatively large eggs of amphibians he discovered in 1924, together with Hilda Mangold, the existence of an area in the embryo, the portions of which, upon transplantation into an indifferent part of a second embryo they're organized, induced, secondary embryonic primordia. The name organizer center or organizer was therefore given by him to those parts. For this discovery of the organizer effect in embryonic development, he was awarded the Nobel Prize in 1935. Later Spiemann showed that different parts of the organization center produce different parts of the embryo. The anterior parts of it tend to produce parts of the head, and the posterior parts of it parts of the tail. Further, tail organizers, when they are grafted into the head region of another embryo, may produce heads instead of tails, the reason being that they are influenced by the head organizer in their new environment. Earlier Spiemann had transplanted the optic cups of new embryos into the outermost layer of the region of the abdomen and had found that they induce the production, in this new situation, of a lens of the eye. This was interpreted as being evidence of the existence of secondary organizers which operate after the induction exerted by the primary organizer has been completed. 
By these and other experiments of a similar kind Speeman laid the foundations of the theory of embryonic induction by organizers, which led later to biochemical studies of this process and the ultimate development of the modern science of experimental morphogenesis. More about Speeman. In 1928 he was the first to perform somatic cell nuclear transfer using amphibian embryos, one of the first moves towards cloning. He was awarded the Nobel Prize in 1935 and Speeman gave the Nazi salute during his Nobel Prize speech. His theory of embryonic induction by organizers is described in his book Embryonic Development and Induction. He never lost his love of classical literature and throughout his life organized evening gatherings of friends to discuss art, literature, and philosophy. He died of heart failure on September 12, 1941.